Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Be sure to check out Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks. TCG Player for cards at great prices while supporting local game stores. And Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. We will be going to Command Fest Richmond June 3rd through the 5th and Command Fest Vegas June 10th through the 12th. We will be recording games of CDH while we were there, so stop on by, say hello, and let's record some games together. We love to see different brews in CEDH. Not everything is always partners in five color suit. There are plenty of brewers out there that are still seeing how far they can push commanders. We recorded a few of those games and now you get to see one of them tonight. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First we have Marcus piloting Krenko, Mob Boss. This deck pilots similar to Winota, seeking to lock down the board and overwhelm opponents with massive armies of creatures. In this case, the army is, you guessed it, goblins. Marcus's opening hand contains a Thousand Year Elixir, Tangle Wire, Scalding Tarn, Deflecting Swat, Castle Embrith, Mana Crypt, and a Pyroblast. Next we have Alex piloting Teshar, Ancestor's Apostle. This is a combo deck seeking to use its commander's ability to generate artifact graveyard loops. Alex's opening hand contains a Scorched Ruins, Altar of Dementia, Skull Clamp, Plains, Mystic Forge, Grim Monolith, and a Remote Farm. After that we have Mike, following the partner pair of Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator and Rograk, Son of Roga. This is a Polymorph deck seeking to cast its commanders and polymorph them into combo creatures. Mike's opening hand contains a City of Brass, Chain of Vapor, Jeweled Lotus, Mystic Remora, Transmogrify, Misty Rainforest, and his London Mulligan is to solve the equation. Finally, we have Bailey, piloting the partner pair of Kark the Thumbless and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. This deck seeks to cast both of its commanders and use their copy and return abilities to storm off and win. Bailey's opening hand contains a Strike It Rich, Remand, Impulse, Cephalid Coliseum, Volcanic Island, and his London Mulligans are a Twin Flame and a Heat Shimmer. Without further ado, let's kick off this goofy Gonzo Goblin graduation. Alex wins the Don't Wipe Your Mouth Challenge and gets to start us off. Alex draws a card for turn and plays a Remote Farm into play tapped. He casts an Urza's Bobble. He cracks his Bobble, looking at a random card in Bailey's hand. Alex passes. During Marcus's upkeep, Alex draws the Urza's Bobble. Marcus draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a snow-covered mountain onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Thousand Year Elixir. Marcus ends his turn. Mike draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogar. He casts a Jeweled Lotus. He casts a Mystic Remora. He cracks his Lotus and casts his other commander, Malcolm, Keen-Eyed Navigator. With everyone stunned at Mike's turn one, Mike passes. Bailey draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He passes. Alex draws and plays a Plains. He casts a Scarecrow. Alex ships the turn to Marcus. During his upkeep, Marcus wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Mountain. He casts his commander, Krenko, Mob Boss. He activates Krenko due to Thousand Year Elixir and creates a Goblin. Marcus passes. During his upkeep, Mike pays to keep his Remora. He draws and moves to combat. He attacks Bailey with Malcolm. Bailey takes it and Malcolm triggers. Mike creates a treasure and in his second main phase, he plays an Island. He casts a Lotus Petal. Mike ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Cephalid Coliseum for turn. He taps his Cephalid Coliseum to cast Desperate Ritual. Remora triggers and Mike draws. Ritual resolves and Bailey adds three red. He casts his commander, Kark the Thumbless. He casts Strike It Rich. Remora triggers and Mike draws. Kark triggers, Bailey wins the flip, copying Strike It Rich. Both resolves and Bailey creates two treasures. All finished up, Bailey passes to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Scorch Ruins, sacrificing Remote Farm and a Plains. He casts a Grim Monolith. Remora triggers and Mike draws. He casts a Mystic Forge and Mike draws through Remora. He looks at the top card of his library through Mystic Forge. He activates Forge, paying a life and exiling the top card of his library. He casts a Skull Clamp. Remora triggers and Mike draws. With nothing else, Alex passes. During his upkeep, Marcus loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and plays a Castle Aaron Breath. He casts Mana Echoes. Remora triggers and Mike draws. Everyone knows this is a big problem, but with no answers, it resolves. Marcus activates Krenko, creating 2 goblins. Mana Echoes triggers and he creates 8, yes you heard that right, 8 colorless mana. He activates Thousand Year Elixir, untapping Krenko. He casts Tangle Wire. Everyone groans and Remora triggers. In response, Marcus activates Krenko, creating 4 goblins. Mana Echoes triggers and adds 32 colorless mana. Then Marcus pays for Remora. All through, Marcus passes to Mike. At the end of Marcus's turn, Mike casts Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Pact of Negation onto the top of his library. Still in the end step, Mike casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Tangle Wire. In response, Marcus casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Chain of Vapor. Remora triggers and Mike draws again. 
Mike sighs and SWAT resolves. Marcus redirects Chain of Vapor to Mystic Forge. Forge bounces and Alex does not continue the chain. The turn moves to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike lets his Mystic Remora die. Also in his upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a City of Brass for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Bailey with Malcolm. Bailey takes it, Malcolm triggers, and Mike creates a treasure. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Bailey casts Impulse. Quark triggers, he wins the flip, and copies Impulse. He looks at the top four, puts one into his hand, and bottoms the rest. Then he does it again. Mike then discards the hand size. During his upkeep, Bailey taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a Mana Confluence. With nothing else to do, he passes. During Alex's upkeep, Tangle Wire triggers. In response, Alex floats four mana through his Scorched Ruins. Then Tangle Wire resolves and he taps his permanence. Before moving to draw, he uses his floating mana to untap his Grim Monolith. He draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Cleric as it enters. He recasts Mystic Forge. He looks at the top card of his library. He activates Forge, paying a life, and exiling the top card. He casts a Chalice of the Void off of the top of his library through Mystic Forge, where X equals zero. He looks at the top of his library again. He casts Lotus Petal off of the top of his library to dig deeper to find an answer. Chalice of the Void triggers and Lotus Petal is countered. Unfortunately, he could not find what he needed and Alex passes the turn. During his upkeep, Marcus wins his Mana Crypt roll. He removes a counter from Tangle Wire, then taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and casts Dire Fleet Daredevil. It enters and he exiles Impulse from Bailey's Graveyard. He activates Krinko, creating 8 Goblins. Mana Echoes triggers and Marcus creates 128 colorless mana. He casts Impulse from Exile using his colorless as mana of any color through Dire Fleet. He looks at the top four, puts one into his hand, and the rest on the bottom. He casts Shared Animosity, and the entire table groans. He activates Thousand Year Elixir, untapping Krinko. He attacks Bailey with four goblins. Shared Animosity triggers, and his creatures get plus three plus oh. Bailey takes 16, and Marcus passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a Fiery Islet. He taps his City of Brass to help cast Glenhorn Buccaneer. In response, Marcus casts Pyroblast, destroying Mike's Malcolm. Then Glenhorn resolves. Mike attacks Bailey with Glenhorn. Bailey takes it, and Mike, plans disrupted, passes the turn. During his upkeep, Bailey taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a Shatter Skull to hammer pass into play untapped, paying three life. He casts Brightstone Ritual. Like seriously, of all the cards to have available, this one could not have been better. Quark triggers, and in response, Mike casts Daze, returning an island to his hand, targeting Brightstone. Bailey pays for Daze, and then Quark's trigger resolves. Bailey wins the flip and copies Brightstone. He then adds 34 red mana. He flashes back Strike It Rich. Quark triggers and he wins the flip and copies it. Bailey creates two treasures. Bailey casts Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. It enters as a copy of Quark. Bailey casts Underworld Breach. He holds priority and casts Reman, targeting his Breach in order to keep drawing cards. Quark and Sakashima trigger. He wins his first flip and creates a copy. Then the copy resolves and returns Breach to his hand, drawing a card. Then he wins his second flip and targets the original copy of Remand. Remand is countered, bounces back to his hand, and he draws a card. Unfortunately, out of blue mana and with nothing else to cast that has an impact, Bailey regretfully passes the turn. During his upkeep, Alex taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. In his upkeep, he looks at the top card of his library through Mystic Forge. He activates Forge, paying a life, and exiling the top card. He draws and casts Arcbound Ravager. He sacrifices Chalice of the Void to Ravager, giving it a plus one plus one counter. He sacrifices Grim Monolith, giving Ravager another 1-1 one, one counter. He casts Altar of Dementia. He sacrifices his Scarecrow to Altar of Dementia, milling 1. He equips his Skull Clamp to his Ravager. He then sacks his Ravager to the Altar of Dementia. Skull Clamp triggers and Alex draws 2. Then he mills 4. With nothing else, and petering out, Alex passes. At the end of Alex's turn, Marcus activates Krinko, creating 16 Goblins. During his upkeep, Marcus wins his Mana Crypt roll. He removes a counter from Tangle Wire, then taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Bailey and Alex with 10 goblins and Mike with 9 goblins. Each goblin gets plus 28 plus 0 through shared animosity. They all take it and Marcus wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a game to behold. Congrats to Marcus on his win. I know that people out there might try to pick apart Marcus's deck. That's not CDH you might say or he got lucky you might say. What we see is someone out there trying to break boundaries and explore new CEDH spaces. He had great interaction, had the perfect answers to threats, and held his own at the table. And we applaud him for it. We encourage everyone to take Marcus's lead and don't be afraid to forge your own paths. Try and see if that commander could play at a CEDH table. Marcus did tonight and look how well it turned out for him. The most valuable card in tonight's game goes to Tanglewire. 
we know that Mana Echoes generated a lot of mana and Thousand Year Elixir got the Goblin Ball rolling early. It was this card, however, that was the key to giving Marcus the time he needed to win the game. Tapping down opponents' permanents was absolutely choking players and their ability to execute their game plans. Mike hardly had the resources to win and was stomped. Bailey got choked on blue mana even after generating over 30 red. That's why we gave it to Tanglewire tonight. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.